Hello, I'm Bob the Booker and welcome to my channel and I thought why not take advantage of this nice backdrop again while I'm here. Um, and uh, the this is sort of me carrying on reading the book along list um, and one of those books was Paul Lynch with Prophet Song. Um, and uh, as with all of my other um, solo reviews um, and particularly the Booker ones, um, I will be avoiding spoilers in the first section and then doing a separate spoilery bit later in the video. So if you want to watch this first bit without spoilers, great. Um, if you need to then log off uh, or click away, I can never find the right terminology for that. If you need to exit the video uh, at that point, that's great and that's all fine. Um, but in the meantime, let's talk a little bit about Prophet Song. So, uh, Prophet Song. In some ways, the book on the book a long list that was a bit more of a mystery to people when the long list was announced. And that's partly just because it was pretty much one of the only ones, uh, at least for the UK, I think, that hadn't been released um, prior to the long list announcement. And so as a result, when this book came out, it kind of came out as a long listed book. And it's, it's a really, it's been so interesting to see people's different reactions to this book because it is a bit of a, it's a, it's a hard one um, in several ways. Not only is the content of this book really quite hard to stomach at times, it's an incredibly gritty book. Um, the, the language and the writing style, it can be quite dense as well. Um, to sort of give a, an example of that, you know, the, the book often uh, doesn't really do paragraphs. And so you'll get sort of long passages where, uh, you know, everything is just kind of, you know, a bit like that, um, where it's just sort of a big wall of text. And so that can be quite difficult and ambitious in some ways as a reader, um, because you do have to kind of take long runs at it, I think. You sort of, for me at least, I found that I needed to be really absorbed into the world of this book um, each time. Partly also because um, the writing style also has its sort of idiosyncrasies. Um, we are talking here about a, um, a mother who is trying to understand a lot of what is going on um, in a sort of a sort of dystopian almost island around her where she is trying to reconcile the absolute violence and brutality around her with some of the the, the choices that she has to make and in some ways as a result she is emotionally blunted um, and that sort of shows in some of the bits of writing where occasionally we get long passages that almost feel not necessarily stream of consciousness but have these sort of run-on sentences that feel very colloquial and feel very um very much like she's talking about more generic things that happen in her day-to-day -day existence before landing an absolute sort of heartbreaking bombshell in the middle of what's going on and so this book really, in many ways, without going into too many spoilers right right from the jump, is just about this this woman trying to navigate this world around her. She um, is trying to get justice for um, for family who have been taken from her in various guises, but particularly um, in terms of, I believe it is her son. Uh, yeah, um, she is trying to, sorry, her husband. Um, she is trying to work out how to how to navigate a fair few of those things. Her husband's been taken from her. He is seen as being complicit. It almost takes on this Kafka-esque element um, in the book where nobody can really tell her what it is that her husband has supposedly done wrong. Um, and nobody can really tell her how it is that she's meant to navigate this sort of broken system and this incredibly unfair and unjust system. Nobody can really tell her what to do at any given stage. She sort of just has to muddle through with her family in tow and kind of hope for the best. Um, and the Kafkaesque element of this, I think, is quite interesting because as the book goes on, we sort of, I think, are made to realise that as absurd and and as Kafkaesque as this feels, this is very much real life. This is something that is as much as it can feel dystopian is sort of part of relatively recent history really um and so therefore the sort of the 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 complications that she must go through and must face all feel like these these extra levels of cruelty put in front of her that she can never quite overcome 
Um, and so the book just grows and grows and in some ways becomes bleaker and bleaker as things go on because there isn't much hope or there isn't and, and there isn't much sort of joy to be found really typically in in books um that will cover something as as um dark as this there are these moments of reprieve of people laughing together or people saying something funny to try and lighten the mood and i think this book kind of Almost, is almost relentless in the way that it keeps pushing further and further and further. And when I say that the book's pushing further, in many ways it's just showing further and further. It's really tempting, I think, and I kept on finding this when reading the book, to keep on imagining this as this other world that never really existed, whereas actually the, the author pushing and pushing is really Paul Lynch saying, hey, do you want to know something else that also happened? Here you go. Um, and that can be really quite the gut punch as you go in this book. Um, and so before I go into some spoilers, I suppose the thing I want to kind of leave you with, if this plane quietens down as it's going by, and it's not going to quieten down, it's not like it's intentionally doing this, you know what I mean. But what I will say for people who, um, who want to read this, I mean, it, it's a lot. It's, it's a lot as a book, and I think parts of it, parts of the style of this didn't always work for me. Sometimes I did feel that the, the bluntness of the book and the kind of, the ways it was sort of seeking to break language could have been pushed further. And I know I've said that about a book that's already pushing a lot. I think it at times felt like the language was left to be a bit looser and a bit more broken up than we'd normally expect. And that's meant to be almost this sort of form and function thing of her scattered thoughts or her um, struggles to, to kind of cope in this world. And I get that. Part of me also just felt that if you're going to do that, go all the way, completely break the language of this book, completely break things, because this is so messed up as a situation that almost the language can go there and can be even more broken. So that's kind of my main gripe, I guess, with the book. But as a story itself, I think is incredibly um, brutally, brutally honest in, in what it's portraying. And I think there's something to be really commended in that. And with that, let's go into some of the spoilers. So with the spoiler curtain in effect, let's go and talk a little bit more about some of these other parts. So our central character, Ailish, uh, I hope I'm saying that right, is, um, is this character who is really trying to find moments of justice in what is incredibly cruel around her. So she, for example, a, a, a thought, a part that I found incredibly poignant was she at one point sees a young man outside of her window who has, is breaking curfew and is about to be arrested. So she runs out the door and pretends that he is her son and that she's sort of like, oh, thank goodness you found him. Um, oh, don't, don't you worry, this will never happen again. I'm gonna make sure of it and tries to welcome him back in and sort of says like, you know, kind of got off lucky. And that young man says, look, I was trying to run away. Um, and running away is a perpetual thing in this book. Everybody is trying to escape where they can. The, the, the dystopian element of the world they're living in feels so cruel that escape feels like one of the only options. And that is where this book goes towards the end, particularly. Um, another thing I found within that is sort of where humanity gets uh, gets sort of compromised, um, not only in terms of how people are treated, but also in terms of how they start to think themselves. So, for example, um, at one point, um, a character, um, well, yeah, one of her sons, Ailish's sons, starts um, talking about, or he, he's sort of thinking about the ways he can sort of continue to survive or he can be okay and a part of that involves him basically watching some of the most grotesque and grim content that he can online involving for example um somebody uh basically an act of an act of terrorism um a sort of an act of of extreme violence taking place and he is watching this in a way that is almost pornographic in how it's sort of portrayed. There's a sort of a, a joy that comes in some of the, the bleakest elements of, of humanity, but not, not necessarily even a joy, a sort of 
um, it fulfills something, it scratches some kind of itch. Um, and I found something about that incredibly unnerving, just the way that she watches this happen and does not have the words for it. What can you say when somebody has seen something so dehumanizing and seems to revel in some element of it? How, how do you come back from that? How do you respond to that? Equally, towards the end of the book, that sense of humanity is also tested. Um, and this is right towards the end of the book, where Ailish is trying to think about how she's going to make her family safe. And part of that involves this really lengthy um, border crossing, um, where along the way, everybody needs to have a cut. She needs to give money to one person, and then she needs to give money to somebody else so that they leave her alone, and then to somebody else to drive her, but then she also needs to give money at all of the checkpoints along the way, and everybody needs to be bribed or paid off. Um, everything is corrupt because the only way you can survive within this world is to exploit those who are a bit below you, because actually all it takes is one misstep and you're at the bottom of the rung. And that keeps on being a recurring theme throughout the book, that there is almost no hope um, in some ways. And in this journey on the way, there's nobody that she can trust, and really, um, really. And, and one part that comes up that I found incredibly harrowing was the way the book deals with um, her daughter. And so at one point, it's sort of done very deftly, I think. It's very subtly done in some ways within the book, um, that uh, she starts to talk about how um, she needs to, to make a crossing and her um, the, the, the security guard says something along the lines of, well, let me talk to your, you know, she says, sorry, I'll give you anything you want. I'll do anything you want. And the security guard or the sort of person at, at the gate essentially says, okay, well, um, let me interview your daughter alone. And she immediately twigs that something more sinister is behind that, that this is not just an interview, this is her teenage daughter potentially about to, to have some horrible things done to her. And she tries to find a way to to approach this. She sort of knows that it's completely unconscionable to do this, but equally, if doing this, if it's almost gonna to happen to her daughter, regardless of, you know, if she stays, it'll happen to her. If they leave, she'll leave with it having happened to her. What does she do? And equally within that, she then tries to find small acts of resistance within it all. So she cuts off the hair um, of, well, some of her daughter's hair to make her less attractive. And this is a teenage girl we're talking about and, um, you know, underage in, in many ways. Um, and so doing this is her attempt to render her daughter unsuitable or unattractive for this task. And it's heartbreaking, just the, the, the various leaps of thinking for, for Ailish as a character to do all of that. That's absolutely heartbreaking. Um, and we apparently have a helicopter now going um and that's the thing that's so utterly terrifying about this book is there are no good decisions there are only decisions that cause less harm and so i think this book really keeps going for it in a way that is utterly i mean it's heartbreaking in so so many ways however the thing i will say on on some of that because this book is so bleak i think yeah you almost i think need that language to match up and be far more for bro more broken, at least for my tastes, or I think I maybe would have wanted the language to be a little bit plainer, to kind of let the the power of some of those sentences sing a little bit more. Sometimes I, I felt like that that kind of hovered in the, the weird middle place between the two, at least that's sort of where I fell on this book. But I still think there's a lot of really unforgettable sort of <sighs> content in this book that is just really surreal in terms of what it's trying to make you think of. Um, we're watching a scenario that feels so utterly broken and despondent and we're trying to make some sense of it all and, and try to find a way. Um, I think there's also been some criticism which I think is fair that the book in some ways 
tries to to do everything at the end by also having a character tell you the whole kind of thrust of the book like this is what we're aiming for and I don't think the book needed it I think the book would have been a bit stronger without that element to it but it's a book that really sits in that deeply uncomfortable place and it's something that I do want to at some point go back and reread as as bleak as this book was because I think there are probably other little things hiding in the smaller bits of this book that I don't think I would have twigged on the first reading but still, I can see why it would have stood out enough in a long list to have been chosen. Um, sorry, of the 150 books, why it would have stood out enough and been chosen. It's a tough book in many, many ways. Um, I'm going to leave it there. I'd love to hear your thoughts and comments on this, this book. Um, again, try to avoid spoilers where you can in the comments. Uh, but a deeply tricky and complicated book in many, many ways. Um, and one that really feels like it turns the dial up of how bleak parts of this long list were um all the way to, to the top uh anyway i've been bothered take care and speak to you soon bye, -bye.